the family department of the General Conference invites you to the first European virtual conference, Families with Jesus. We are waiting for you. Die Familienabteilung der Generalkonferenz lädt dich herzlich zum ersten virtuellen europäischen Kongress ein mit dem Thema Familien für Jesus. Wir freuen uns auf dich! Oh, General Conferencio Choladi Ostario Mechivio Önt. Az első európai virtuális kongresszusra. Családok Jézusra. Várjuk Önt! Személye tudja, hogy a generálnak a konferencia Rikáni, na parva a európészka virtuálna konferencia. Szemeisztvó Szűszúsza! Csáltamé! Il Dipartimento di Famiglia della Conferenza Generale è lieto di invitarvi al primo congresso virtuale europeo La, La Famiglia con Gesù! Vi aspettiamo! Ciao Rodine, Generale Conferenze, zapraša vas na pierwszą europejską virtualną konferencję u Rodine z Jezusem. Czekamy na Ciebie! Departamento Famiglia a Conferenze Generale Vă invită la primul congres virtual european. Familia cu Isus. Să așteptăm! Semenia Adel, Generalna Conferență, preglășa la primul europeu virtual conferență. Semenia cu Isus. Prihădi, ne așteptăm te dă. Il Departamento de Familia de la Asociación General te invita. Al primul congres virtual europeu. Familias con Jesus. Te esperamos! O Departamento de Família da Conferência Geral te convida ao primeiro congresso virtual europeu. Famílias com Jesus, te, te esperamos! esperamos. Dear brother, dear sister, and dear friend, welcome to the Sabbath afternoon program. To start this program, We are going to listen a special song from the family Dimitrovi from Estonia in Bulgarian language.
Let us pray. Beloved Father in heaven, hallow be thy name. We thank you for this opportunity you give us to be together in this afternoon. Bless each one of the brethren who is going to participate and that your Holy Spirit can be with us. Forgive our sins and mistakes. In Jesus' name we ask you, Amen. As we are approaching the end of our family conference, in the last days we have heard eight topics, and today the family hunger is going to have a summary of them. Also we are going to have among those sons a premier son from Italy and two experiences. And after the participations, we will have the closing of the conference by Pastor Adalicio Fontes and the final prayer. Welcome, brethren, to the afternoon program. May the peace of the Lord be with all brothers and sisters in the Lord. We are very happy to be able to be part of this family conference under the title Ephata, be open. And my desire is, our desire is that the Lord may open our minds and our hearts, that our families may also be blessed with this program uh, of the family department. Uh, I'm here with my wife Lisbeth and with my son Camiel, and we are very thankful to the Lord for this opportunity that he gave us to participate in this program. And before we go to the topic, we would like to pray to the Lord and ask that he may guide us in this presentation. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come to thee and we thank you, Lord, for your love to us. Thank you, Lord, for being the center of our families. We need you, Lord. We need your touch in our families, in our relationship between us, with my wife, and also with our children. Lord, be the inspiration in our home, as well as the inspiration of all our brothers and sisters in their home, in their families. Lord, forgive our sins and bless us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Amen. We are going to do a review of the activities that were done during this week, and especially of the first day in this moment. And I just listed, what was the first topic that we had in this family conference? What can you tell us about this first topic? Okay, the first topic was parents knowing our children. Uh, it was presented by Pastor Jose Giner from Switzerland, and it was based on the Bible verse of Genesis 6, verse 1 and 2, which says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took the wives of all which they chose. And in this topic, there are five important points that were emphasized. The first one is that there are only two kinds of people on earth, the group of the obedient and the group of the disobedient. 
Then the number two was raise your children in the truth. The third point was spending time with the children together, between parents and children. Number four was build trust between parents and children. And number five was create an environment of love. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'd like to ask Carmel in this review, uh, what are we are doing of the topics, what do you understood and what is for you to be sons of God and sons of men? Well, personally, I think what it means in this verse by sons of God and sons of men is that the children of God, they follow a plan, they follow a principle, guidelines, mm -hmm. uh, which we see that are good guidelines. They, they lead to good things. Mm -hmm. But the people from the world, the children of men, they don't have those principles or guidelines that children of God do, and they don't have yeah, guidelines, uh, principles that they should have. They, they are doing everything out of passion and desires. Mm -hmm. uh, and Lisbeth, in the, in the text that you just read, it was mentioned also that uh, the sons of God, they were attractive to the appearance of mm -hmm. the sons of, of yeah. the women of the world. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about yes, that? Yes, it says that the, beautiful, the women were beautiful and of course they married with, with the unbelievers. And that was a great mistake because I see as married woman that it is a big blessing to be with a Christian husband who, with whom or who shares with me the same ideas, the same, the same basis in our decisions. We can go together to church. We, we raise our children the same faith. We have decisions for, for spiritual decisions that, that we love and we, we like to work together. So it's a big blessing, but I also think in the ones who don't have these blessings, maybe they have a destroyed home or have quarrels, maybe there is even divorce or separation. And imagine the children without their parents, without one of their parents. So it is very important if you have the choice to decide who you're going to marry, that you think carefully and choose what God has um, written for us. Choose uh, someone from the same faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what was the second point that was mentioned there? I think it was mentioned the importance of the education, the truth. Yes, it, is, it says educate in the truth. So what are the blessings and challenges for you, Kadmiel, that you are from a, a home that, has, that is Christian and has Christian principles? What are the blessings and also challenges for you? There's a lot of blessings as well as there are challenges. Some of the blessings were that we had principles, we had guidelines, we had parents that were involved with us, that they were able to do things with us, that we were constantly, you know, having a, a good family together. We would do worships together in the morning, and that was a good thing. Guidelines that we had, we had to be there. We weren't allowed to sleep in worship, even though sometimes that <laughs> happened. And guidelines like that were good. And not having that Christian parents is a little more difficult. Having the well, yeah, parents that have you know, difficulties. Um, one important thing for me was when we got to just follow a plan that we had in the family for the week. And we would follow that plan and we would also do it with Christ related. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is wonderful. And also, Pastor Giner was mentioning about the parents that they think, okay, they are small children, maybe in the, when they grow up, they will decide who to follow, if they will follow God or not. And I, when he mentioned this is a big mistake when the parents think that the children are free to do whatever they want. No, it's very important for parents that are Christian parents to educate with firm principle the children in, uh, in the different habits, something important. Children we were mentioning in before that the son of men, they let themselves by the impulses. And when they are children, when they are small, they have difficult to differentiate between good and evil. Even when they are teenagers, they are still not in the maturity and they still let themselves a lot of times to be led by impulses. And we need to be careful. We need to teach them principle. This is very important. And this we need to start since when they are small. Uh, we need to be firm in principle and teach them. And don't think, okay, they can come to the worship if they want or not. No, we need to be firm. 
in certain things because we are educating them in their life. Yes, Kadmir. Sometimes we as kids, we think it's too much. We think there's too many rules, too many guidelines that we have to follow. Mm -hmm. But it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. With the instruments, you showed us that. Most of us had some instruments we didn't like. But you continued pushing that we continued practicing the instruments and it turned out it was a blessing. Mm -hmm. And in, in my case, it should have been a little more because I left some instruments because my own wishes and you let me, which is also part of the childhood that the parents also give them opportunities to do the, what they want to do. But as well, later on, we see that it was all for a benefit. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud that my parents taught me well with that. I had no several instruments now and to mm -hmm. good use. Amen. We have the third point of the article, uh, spending time together. Is that really a blessing, Cadmian? It's very important, very important to spend time together. And we see that in many different aspects. For example, just being able to have one lunch or dinner together with the family is important. We have the conversation, what we did during the day. Or just the, just the fact that we are there together with our parents playing some games, doing some things, establishes a, a happy home. Or, for example, my dad, he, he had a lot of missionary trips he had to do sometimes for weeks. And it was difficult for us, especially me. But when he came back, we had a fun time together. We would go outside in the trampoline. We would go um, do some games in, in the yard. Maybe go swimming, we would do sometimes too, depending on the weather. But we did activities and... It was nice. Thank you. Uh, it is true. It is not uh, easy to balance between our responsibilities and our time. And sometimes parents think, okay, I'm bringing food, I'm bringing what they need, and this is sufficient. But it's not sufficient. We need to spend time together. And as just he mentioned, just jumping in the trampoline. I never thought that that was going to be so big impression on you. And, but this is things that memories that remain, just having some fun, some moments with the children, and they cannot, don't need to be necessary hours, but keep memories. Or when we spend also just a weekend together, uh, just father and son, that we uh, decided to go and meditate and talk. This is a blessing in the family. Um, it is, we need to make efforts, parents, fathers and mothers, to spend time regularly with each one of our children. Uh, then we have trust. Lisbeth, uh, was another important point to trust, to build trust. How can we, what are the activities that build trust mm -hmm. in the relationship between yeah. parents and children? It's similar like with the time that we do things together. So when we do plans in the family that we include everyone to express themselves or that we hear our children when they have desires or problems or dreams that we, that we listen to them, take time with them. And also in our practical work, taking them, the mother takes their girls or even their boys into the kitchen and gives, they, they do the things together. Or the father takes their son when he's fixing up in something in the household. So, and share their hobbies, their achievements. It is important also having also some humor and some fun times. And for example, going in the snow sliding or shopping together or go, just going in the park. It's just little details that we can do together and listening to them and they to us that, that strengthens our trust. What do you think, my son, about um, finding trust to, uh, in each other? In order to have trust, the parents must also give trust. And many times, um, depending on the age, it's difficult for to give trust. Um, kids, a little more easier. You have kids that are small, they don't know what they're doing yet. They feel like the parents know everything and that helps to establish a trust. But when we reach teenage years, it's a little more difficult. And I remember my teenage years weren't, weren't too easy for me. And just being able to, to be there for the child, to, for, to be there for, for us as kids is important. Letting us just let everything go on you, just cry, give a good cry, or being able to just listen to our, our old hopes, our wishes, our desires, or our plans. Once again, depending on the age, it's, it's it differs with age. Later on in life, when they get a little older, in the 20s, it's not as easy to get a trust because it can mm -hmm. be easily broken and easy, it's hard to earn back. Mm -hmm. But to establish the, the, that trust in the teenage years is the most important thing. Mm. Thank you, Hassan, for your also comments. 
it is very important. We need to acknowledge each one in the home, respect each one in the home, and uh, also um, I believe this trust grow when uh, the, uh, he receive responsibilities are entrusted with responsibilities mm. that uh, we accept also what they are do and recognize also the effort in certain things that they try to do in the home or even in the personal life. And the last point that was mentioned in the article is the atmosphere of love. The Pastor Hine was mentioning and testimony also mentioned that the home should be a piece of heaven. And how can we make this? What does it mean uh, that we build this environment of love in the family? How can we see that practical? Can we? What do you think? It's important to hear the son and hear the experience of my wife and we'll, we'll share these experiences because we need to live practical, not in the theory. Well, the home where we feel the atmosphere of love, that, that love in the home, is when we feel happy, when there is joyfulness in the family, when we feel loved, when everything seems to be going in a good way, but also is when, when we do things together, when we're able to, to just do activities, just listening to each other, being able to do some pizza maybe in the family together, where everyone makes a pizza, or a protection as well, just when the parents are there, when there's a storm of lightning and thunder, you get to go to your bed, even though it might not be as much as space. Or just the moments that we spend together in the weekends, Sundays, and we get to go out and outside and do some activities. But most importantly, we feel that love when, when parents do something where we, we realize how much they love us. For example, when we're sad, the mom prepares a nice meal that we like. Later on, we see that, that how, how much they appreciate us because as youth, as teenagers, there are moments when we feel that we are not loved. But when we see the acts, then we feel how much we are loved and we see how much we are loved. Thank you, Cadmian. We need to always keep this nice environment of love in our home, in our relationship, in speaking kind words, in the respect, in the service that we do one for another, in the time of dialogue. This is very important. I want to bring here a Bible text to close this first part. Psalm 27, 3 says, Law, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. Mm -hmm. Children are blessings in the home. Their family is a blessing. It should not be a loss, but it should be a joy. Let's ask God to help us in this relation, in building a nice home. Then we went to the second topic, and Lisbeth was the one that was sharing the second topic. Can you tell us more? That second topic was... The title Children uh, Knowing Their Parents. And it was based in the um, Isaiah chapter 49, 15, and 16. It says, Can a woman forget her sucking child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Ye, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have gra graven thee upon the palms of my hand. If God carry his love to us in his hand of his in the great sacrifice that he did in the cross, how much also should we inspire also to do the best? And we as Christians, we should know this love of our Heavenly Father in order to serve God in the best way. In this topic, we saw a different section. We saw first the blessing of what parents bring to the children, the importance of a friendship between parents and children firmness in education, the influence of the children and the relationship between the parents, how the parents influence the children if they have a good relation, and the importance of covering, uh, caring for the parents when they are in old age. And we go to the first part, the first part, the blessing of what parents offer their children. Here, I'd like to ask Admiral, I mentioned this, but I'd like to ask Admiral in this part, uh, there are many children that don't have the parents. What does it mean for you to have your parents alive? It is scientifically proven that young men without their, their fathers, they lead a path that goes to, well, that goes down, doesn't go up. And having parents that were there for me throughout my life has been a very big blessing. Just being able to have them as a support. When we fall down, you're there to pick us back up. 
because we do have moments where we where we don't we don't think we'll make it we, too too much for us an exam that we don't think will pass or where we have an emergency something that happens where we need the parents and they're there when we don't have the parents it's difficult because you don't have that backbone that you need also the firmness that they give us sometimes with saying no and then later on we see the importance of that uh, it's like the, the spare wheel that we need sometimes because we get a flat tire and they're there thank you and even to you Elizabeth you also have your parents still alive what yes. do they mean for you hmm. well my parents I can really say the more older we get, the, the more the grows the appreciation we have for them. And they have it for us. They appreciate us. And we, I always have their support in, in, in their experience. They are happy for us when things go good. They pray for us. I can count on them. And they, they follow us. So what is also very nice for me to see the principles they have left in my life. The education, the way they ed raised us was important and I can see it reaches until my children. All what I have learned in my childhood and youth, has, I, I pass it on to my children and I'm sure they will pass it on to, their, to my grandchildren in the future. So I see how beautiful it is to have parents and parents always see their children, always go with them. I remember my father-in-law also, he says, yes, I, 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 I'm looking all the sermons you're giving that are online. So we see they, they are involved in our lives. Mm -hmm. Okay, the second part was the importance of friendship between parents and children. Even though the parents are parents and not friends, but parents should also be friends of the children. Uh, what can we say about that? Mm -hmm. Maybe... Uh, well, yeah. yeah. I, I'm thinking one day you might be also a father and having your wife, if God allows this still in this time. And what characteristics do you think would you like to see your, the mother of the children or your wife one day to have? It is said that there are mothers who pamper their children, who are fashionable, who are busy, or mothers that are more calm, others that are more energetic, with authoritarian, or just mothers that are like a friend. What do you think? What would be your, your features? Well, I personally think there's three important points that I'm looking for that, that needs to be there. The first is patience. They need to have patience with the kids, have patience also with me. Second is firmness, know a certain amount of firmness that needs to be given. And third is to be a friend. And it needs to be equalized, it can't be one that's too great compared to the other, otherwise it'll be unbalanced. And that's the, those are the things that I think I need to see in order to have that. And I've seen a lot of that in my mother as well, as she's been firm with us, <laughs> she's been friends with us, and she's also been, have patience with us. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I remember also with my father that uh, uh, when I was a teenager, he invited me to go with him in my vacation time for a missionary crusade. Uh, it was in a different city. We spent three months together and that was a blessing to do things together and be friends together, support each other and building each other in the relationship. That was a big help that we have un united me with my father. Um, but at the same time, uh, we need to understand that parents need to be firm with the children. This is a part in the relationship. And I remember my mom had been also very firm with me. And uh, firmness in education is another element. Mm -hmm. What can you say about that, Lisbeth? So, yes, that, that's my question. When should we, as mothers or parents, be firm and when not? Mm -hmm. It's a good <laughs> point. Because, you know, we should also not have like a, a military family, a military picture just giving orders to the children. I don't think that is right. But when to be firm and when not to be firm. You know, there are certain desires in the children that, or maybe in your wife, let, what, do, what do we do today? We go, maybe so they're free. Should we eat together? Should we uh, go somewhere? Should we walk somewhere? You know, it's not that need to be my desires to be enforcing the children, 
But there are certain things that I think we need to be firm. Should the children come to the worship or not? I think this is part of the life. Or should they speak softly when patients to, to us as parents or to the children? Should I allow them just to do any kind of, 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 of reactions to us? I think there are certain things that I should not allow. Why? Because it's affecting the development. It's affecting the character or the obedience. I need to be firm, require obedience. Why? Because they need to learn that also that in the future development, as future parents, they also may have firmness with their children in certain principles. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is very important. I remember, as I say, my mother was very firm. I remember a day that I came a little bit late because we were with youth activities and it was after midnight and she was waiting there uh, with me. Uh, and when I came at the home, even though it was late, I need to hear a message from my mom. And then after that time, I, I was respectful trying to um, yeah, talk more with my mother and, and keep the principle that she was having for the home. Yes, our children always want to push our limits. They want to go a little further, but we need to say, okay, that's what I said, that's how it is, and sometimes we, we cannot move. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. And now we go to the fourth point, was the influence that parents had on the children in the relationship. I to ask Cadmiel, uh, what do you think uh, is the inspiration that you receive or the influence that you receive from the parents' relationship? Well, um, my bedroom was placed right beside my parents' bedroom. And at night, sometimes I'd hear conversations. I wouldn't hear the exact words, what, what they were saying, but I would hear that they were talking. And it would go on to quite an extent during the night. And that, that is something that is very, very good. Something that I want to see as well in the future with me, for example. That I talk with my wife and that you as well. The talking just has, sees that you try and make sure that there's patience in the home. That you have everything organized, set out for the, for the week, for the day. Um, and that was nice to see that. As well as sometimes when, when there was certain, like, certain problems that you would come and you would help mom out when she, she couldn't, or when mm -hmm. she was feeling sad or something going on with her parents, you would be supportive. And as well, I remember one time when um, my mom had to go to, to Germany because my mom, my grandmother was, was, was in the best situation health-wise, that we made a surprise. That I remember we painted the house when she was gone. <laughs> and coming back, she didn't realize immediately, but then after a little bit, she started noticing that there was something that was missing from little scratches and little problems that were drawn on the wall by some of us kids. And she was happy to see that. And it was just a detail of love mm -hmm. that was shown. Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, now for you, Lisbeth, what were the inspiration that you received from your parents? In my parents, I what I most remember, if it, it's already many years back, but in my childhood, I saw them always praying together, kneeling at their bed and praying together. We went in in the bedroom and I saw them praying together. Or also when we already had our family worship, they were still there doing their worship together. So I see that it was a big example, good inspiration for us to see their love for God, for the words, to be united in, in Christ and also in their principles. They were very clear what they taught us. They, they took it from God's word. So I, I remember that. It was mm -hmm. my inspiration to give also to my family. Great. But also your parents, and that was the last point, parents get in an old age and your parents your mother is more than 80 your mm. father is in about approaching 90 years uh, what is the importance now of caring and supporting the parents in the old age mm. what can you say Lisbeth? yes today my parents are old 80 almost 90 my father is going to be 90 this month and I see they need our support of their children. It can be physically going, helping them. It can be emotionally to lift them up and by a phone call, can be financially, can be in organizing something for them. It is very important. They, they need, they feel more dependent on us now because they have reached that age and they need regular communication or regular uh, in, involvement in, 
in the lives of with them and us. So it's very important that we think in them and we care for them and we give them calls and touch their lives on their base where they they need to see us. And Carmen, maybe you have not just parents, but you have your grandparents. What do your grandparents mean for you? It's very nice to have both grandparents from both sides still alive, mm -hmm. your parents and your parents. And they've both shown us the love that they could give. Every time we go and visit, they made the best that they could for us. The best meals, and it was too much sometimes, but it was very nice. Mm -hmm. And as well, my grandpa, your, your dad, he, he's giving me counsels as well in relation to work. And that means a lot. But not just that, the sacrifices that our grandparents made for my parents just shows how much they love them. And it's, it's a good example for us to have. And as well, the memories that they share with us, certain experiences that the parents haven't shared, that our grandparents have shared. <laughs> just, it's nice to have them that they can share that with us. Mm -hmm. Our parents had uh, impressed us in our life. They had been an inspiration also in our lives. For me, my father had been great inspiration in the evangelistic work, in my service also for the Lord. And I'm happy also my son also serve the Lord and I hope I can continue being an inspiration in your ministry, in your life. Mm -hmm. But also with the age, with the time, they come in needs. I don't know times that my father, my mother, through the limitation, come to challenges and how to proceed. And we children need to be there for them. We need to support them. We need to be firm, encouraging, even limiting them to certain things because if they continue in the old lifestyle, they don't have the energies anymore. We need to help them in the balance of the situation of their life and uh, give them the security or the assurance that we are there also for them now in the time of need. That's why let us uh, children uh, take time for our parents. Some parents take time for our children. Let's love them. Let's help them. Amen. Let's be patient with them. And I want to close with the text in 1 Timothy 5, 8. Say, but if any provide not for his own and especially for those on his own house he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel it's telling us that we need to take care for our family we cannot just serve others and we are not taking proper time proper care proper support from our children as well as for our parents may the lord help us and inspire us and give us a wisdom how to deal in every case a heart full of love, but also firmness in certain principle. Let's close this part with a prayer. Lisbeth, you can lead us in prayer. All right. Our dear Lord, we are thankful to you because you are our father. You are our best example how a father takes care of his children. And help us to love you, Lord. Help us to be also these blessings for our children. And our children may it be for their children, Lord. You have entrusted us this role and help us to carry it on with love, with patience, with kindness. And that we always include you in everything we do. May you bless all these parents, all these families that are watching this series of topics. And may you bless them and enrich their lives with beautiful memories and beautiful um, times with their families. And forgive our sins, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 May God bless you.
Hello reader, I have been asked by the family department of the Spanish Association to give a general message to other parents and of course I am going to talk about my own parents. However, I would like to extend my gratitude to all parents who have done so much for us. Well, first of all, I would like to say that I am an only child, my father is a pastor, and I not only have a father and a mother, but also a nanny, the same as in the aristocracy families. And well, for better or for worse, all of this has shaped my character. Also, I would like to say that both of my grandmothers have influenced and molded my character. From my father, I have learned to be a sensible, serious person, but also patient. And from my mother, I have learned to face injustice, to persevere, and also to be responsible in those tasks that I have undertaken. From my nanny, I have learned to be helpful and supportive without expecting anything in return. She's an unconditional, very helpful person. Both of my grandmothers died in the Lord, and from them I learned to be generous. My grandmother, for example, Rita Reina, was a person who raised funds to build chapels and churches in Venezuela, which is the country it comes from. Uh, my grandmother, from my father's side, Nelida Rodriguez, she was a given person, very generous. She used it to find people in need and gave her own things away, things that she might still need, such as sheets, tablecloths. She gave them to people that were in need, and I have to say that neither of them had a lot of money to spare. I would like to send my parents, both for their spiritual guidance and for their efforts to support me. On the spiritual side, I am thankful especially because they were consistent in what they preached and in how they have lived in our home, and I value something above all. And it's that since I was little, they have always taken me to our Lord Jesus as our Savior. It is true that we all know that parents are in place of God, but they have always taught me that they are sinful beings and that they have had a mission of raising me. On the other hand, materially, my parents helping me, supporting me throughout my studies at university until I finished university and started working at the age of 25. They also gave me a musical training that I am now grateful to them. At first I was not very excited about playing the piano, but they insisted. They even waited for me while I was in class. I have to thank them for that. But well, supporting me, they went further. They even lent me money to buy my first property an apartment that we recently sold, and with God's help, we will buy a house where we can live together as they grow older. Regarding this fact that they are in the last phase of their lives, I would also like to send a message to all of you who have parents who are elderly. May you have the patience that they had when you were little, when you totally depended on them. And it's true that all the people are not like children because they have that self-sufficiency that children do not have so that makes things a little more complicated. But anyway, have patience, honor them in words and actions, so that their commandment be fulfilled in you, and you may have a long life, and also tomorrow, when they, unfortunately, are no longer by your side, your children will treat you the same way that you have treated your parents. Then Matthew 7, 12 will be also fulfilled in your life, so in everything do to others what you would have them do to you. So this is my recommendation, that you treat them with great affection, because tomorrow that will also come back to you, 
when your children will have to take care of you. This is the tribute that I wanted to express to all parents, not only to my parents, who of course are the ones I know. This is my message to everyone. Goodbye. See you later. Szemében a mahon felé, nagy küzdelem sietek, megváltó mellé. Minnyáján futunk ugyan, sokan bizonytalanban, én reményes erősítel nézek itt felé. Úgy fussak, hogy eljuthassak a bárány elé. Úgy küzdjek, se előre menjek, győzelem felé. Aki késik, s nem halad, koronáton elmarad. Ami hátra van, már hagyva, ne nézzük többé. Úram, szeres lelkem, vezess, dicső célodra. Járásomat irányítsad igaz utadra. Csala föld létszózónom, a bánnak vigasztalom, s vigyen kegyed innen veled, dicső honodban.
May the peace of the Lord be with all of you. We are going to continue at this moment with the second part of our uh, summary of the presentation of this family conference, Ephata, Be Open. May the Lord open our minds and our hearts uh, and continue having the influence with His Spirit in our hearts, in our families. But before we go to the summary, we are going to ask Melita to lead us in prayer. Okay, let's pray. Before I turn home, we come before you in this in this day. We thank you so much for your love and your care for us. Thank you that we can be here together as a family. We pray that you bless all the families that are watching, that you may guide them, that you may strengthen them, that um, they may be united in you in love. And we pray that you continue to guide us in our lives, help your Holy Spirit to dwell amongst us, and please forgive all our sins. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 We have uh, here the past, the, during the past days, two topics related with the communication. One was presented by Pastor Wesley Gomez, and the other was by Sister Jurena Trujillo. And one was talking about the communication between the couple, and the other the communication between parents and children. And I'd like to introduce this reading in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 6 and 7, what the Lord says, it says the word of God, These words that I command you will be in your heart. You will repeat them to your children and talk about them sitting at home or walking in the road when you go to bed and when you get up. That means that we need to have dialogue, communication in our families. Some points that we hear in this presentation was the definition about communication, the attitude in the communication, communication between the spouses, communication with the children, and advance by faith in family communication, trusting in the help of God. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to go first to the definition of communication. And Melite, what do you think is, a, what is for you communication at, in the home? Well, all of us humans, like, we're very social beings, and so a way of connecting with others is, is through communications as a way to reach the heart of others. Mm -hmm. It's We can maybe divide it into two factors, the, the words we say, but also how we say it, because many times the way we say something can change the definition mm -hmm. of what we're saying, so that's always something, in, a key in communication. But communication isn't just through words, well, we can express our feelings, but it's also through um, gestures or um, different expressions or actions, I would say. Mm -hmm. And what will you say, Talita, about communication? <laughs> <laughs> well, Pavi speaks little, but sometimes his like expressions, his look tells us a lot. Like, or maybe the gesture sometimes says more than words. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that even our dog, um, when my dad makes like a sign or talks to her, she reacts and she understands it, even though she's, he's just signaling it or something. Ah, we see here even communication with our pets. Yeah, thank you, Talita, for that. Uh, another point that we saw in the communication is the attitude in the communication. Lisbeth, what can you add to what Talita says in this uh, way of communicating that maybe is not through words? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we talk or speak is also the tone, the voice we use can be scary or can express confidence and we can understand this. Mm -hmm. Also the style, how we speak, uh, that we, the words we use can open another one's mind or can even close it or put him in defense. Then also it is very important for the young people when we speak to them that, they, that we speak in a friendly manner that they don't that we don't cause to put them in more re, in a great rebellion and it's always important also the face we have if it expresses happiness or frowns you know that imp immediately will cause a reaction in the one that is listening to us and also communication includes that we, we by ourselves, listen what others say. Uh, we, and also listening before we talk. It says in James 1 verse 19, No, my beloved brother, let every man be quick to hear, slow to speak and slow to anger. Mm -hmm. 
So communication between spouses was the next topic, mm -hmm. the next part of that topic. And what is the value for you in communication between married couples, between spouses? Yeah, it's very important the communication between us as parents. Uh, and this is a big chapter that we can talk. Why? Because there are different uh, things that are important here. There is no proper communication, is there is no understanding. We can maybe talk and say, uh, hi, uh, how are you doing? But it's just a mechanical communication. And we need to go deeper in the communication, is understanding the heart of the person. And for that, we need to take time in the communication. Sometimes silence, uh, Elizabeth mentioned, you mentioned about we need to hear, but sometimes silence can destroy the relationship in the sense that we don't talk. And this happened to many couples that they just have the, the mechanical communication, but this destroy the, the confidence, the relationship, but also rudeness in the communication destroy the relationship. Angry criticism destroy also the communication, also criticism without solution, discourage and also destroy the relationship. Here we see, sometimes we say, no, I need to mention what is what. Is what. But we need to think in what is the purpose. The purpose is to build a relationship, to find solution. Then we need to see also how we express these, these, these needs that we have one to, a, to each other. And this is very important. Don't forget that every action had also a reaction. That's why, uh, interesting, somebody says, if they criticize me, better I back out or better I don't talk. Or a woman was just uh, criticizing the man, why are you always out of the home? And the man was answering, was saying, uh, if I go, I, if I return home, I feel uh, unhappy in the home. Then I prefer to stay out of home because you always criticize me. Then we see how important it is to create a communication environment in the home that we feel comfortable. It's not just saying the things but it's building up each other. And that is very important. The communication, as Melita says, is a key to the heart. And we need to understand uh, that we need to grow in, in communication, help us to build each other. What else can you say mm. for the communication, Lisbeth? Yeah, I also can say it motivates me a lot when you say, oh, how good was this food? Or how nice are you dressed? Or how clean looks the house? These are all motivation to do it even better or do it again, mm -hmm. no? Uh, in instead of criticizing, oh, it's it's a little burned, or <laughs> you you prefer these kind of comments that are positively. So also, I um, appreciate very much when you listen to me, when when you're waiting patiently until I finish what I want to say, and mm -hmm. that our communication can grow. And I I learn a lot when you when you answer me to that also. So. Words of appreci appreciation, sincere appreciation, and also to our sacrifices, the appreciation is a big gives a big importance. Uh, but I know also many times we lack in giving uh, words of appreciation, and couples need to work in this with, in, among the couples and also with their children. And it says in in a testimony of the servant of the Lord, it is the little attentions, the many daily incidents and the simple courtesies that constitute the sum of happiness in life and the carelessness shown in not uttering kind, loving, encouraging words or putting into practice the little courtesies in what contributes to the sum of life's misery. So it happens a lot that we go only in one direction instead of the other. So let's be put attention in the very little things that make our marriage life and our families happy. Mm -hmm. So Talita, uh, what do you like the most about mom and dad? What they would tell you? Um, I like when they ask me like if I need any help in the school. Also, when they say I love you and they give hugs and also mm -hmm. when they say let's go play outside or mm -hmm. like when they do stuff with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. 
uh, children, they need to feel our love and care and they need to hear that we love them and get these hugs. Melite, what are the words of mom or dad that have motivated you to the most and which are the ones that have demotivated you when we talk in the way we talk to you in our communication? Well, well like Dita said, obviously all those, you know, sweet little words, I love you and whatever. But I, I think also one thing that motivates me especially is when they my parents come to me and we talk together, we sit down together to talk, especially about like my goals, my my future. Um, and they help me set higher goals. They say, you can do this, you you're, you can do better, you can accomplish these things. And it's encouraging that they try to help me set bigger boundaries and have faith in me that I can even accomplish more. Um, yeah, those are the kind of things that I like. Something that demotivates me, maybe at times when I need sort of like immediate help or immediate kind of sort of advice or words and sometimes they don't have enough time or they just need a little bit more time to respond to me uh, that's one thing but they're always there to you know hug me or give me um, words of encouragement mm -hmm. thank you very good yeah okay now we also saw the importance of the communication with the children uh, what kind of uh, advice will you give, uh, Lisbeth, to the mothers in the communication with the children? Okay, it's important that mothers take the time to talk to their children, not only do this and that, but also uh, a mom needs to motivate their children and give them motivation in goals, in in accomplishments, that she, is, she looks and takes care that they they accomplish something because it's rewarding by itself if they see, oh, I have finished, I'm, I'm glad. And so also they need a guide. Um, many times the young people or the children don't know what is next, what should they do, have no ideas, but the, the parents, they should talk to them and give them ideas and give them guide. But above all also we need to express ourselves when we have to be firm in, in what we have to tell them. Sometimes they don't want to do their homework or, or whatever. And we need to talk to them in a kind way and also teach God's principles, God's, God's word when we, when we um, have to be firm and when we talk to them. They need this guide also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Besides what already was mentioned, to be kind and, and encouraging and have, show appreciation uh, to them. Mm -hmm. And I will say to the, to the fathers, to the, yeah, the men, that it's important also to take time because man think a little bit different than the wife. The wife spend a lot of time at home. Man think, okay, I provide for the home. I work in hard. Then they should be happy with what I bring. But we see communication is also necessary. On that we need for the partner, for a wife or spouse, as well as for the children. That's why husbands, please consider, and even some uh, counselors, they recommend in the planning of the schedule of the week to separate a special time for the communication. Just take time and say, no, children, I'm having my time with my mom, we need to talk, and just talking about planning, talking about the need of the children, talking about uh, how they feel during the week, the concerns, just having the general uh, building up the relationship on, on trying to satisfy the needs of each other, but also for the children. How important is when we as fathers take time when they are going to sleep and give a kiss, or how was your day, are you happy, what was sad today, what was, are your uh, concerns, that we try to encourage them and take these little minutes, but these little minutes, or even if we can uh, share a story, how wonderful they take these moments with dad or with mom, especially with dad. But also for me, it was very important when I had opportunities, we'd go along with my daughter, with my son, with my children in the car, just trying to open a dialogue and say, how are you feeling? How is how are you going with your friend? And try to go deeper in the communication in some counseling that we can give as fathers for our children. And I want to 
read in this moment also what the Lord says in Hebrew chapter 11 verse number 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen although uh, we have uh, challenges or we communicate why don't you do this text of faith with the communication interesting is we need to think that even though it's difficult we need to go higher in the goals and believe that God can help us to achieve these things because this is the will of God God wants to see the families happy and we need to then go in faith asking the Lord to help us in our spouse communication as well as with our children in the communication but we also had a second topic and that was another topic was with Pastor Hugo Sanchez from Ecuador and that was entitled Premarital Orientation or Counseling. In that topic we saw the importance of the family that is the basic cell in the society. Uh, the marriage is a union of two different worlds with different customs. It was a second point. The third one is the family is a sacred circle and the fourth the immoral uh, deviation or corruption that is affecting the, the families, the society. And I'd like to introduce this part with the text in Galatians 6, 6, it says, Let him that is taught in the world communicate unto him that teach in all good things. That means when we learn, we need to communicate, we need to share the things. And especially we that are uh, already experienced the married life, we need to counsel our children, counsel also the, the couples that are planning to marry. How important is this counseling time? before they take the step in life. And uh, I went to ask Talita, and I was thinking, what can I ask Talita in relation with this topic? And I thought, families are destroying the society. Many families, because the parents don't understand, they think the solution is divorce, the father then go another way, away, the mom maybe married another man. How do you think the children that don't have mom and dad at home feel? What can you say about that? Well, I think they would feel very sad and discouraged, but sometimes I feel happy that I have a, I feel really, I'm really happy that I have a dad. Because sometimes before I go to sleep, he comes and gives me a kiss or maybe prays with me or gives me a hug and he's always there right by my side. But some children don't, or some kids don't have their dad or mom and they have to <coughs> deal with it and I'm sure they're very sad and when the dad is there the dad gives them courage and counsels and helps them a lot it's really nice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay we hear uh, what Mel Talita says what will you say Melita uh, in addition from what Talita says what is uh, affecting this, uh, this uh, the development of the children yeah, I think it always affects the kids, especially whenever a family, like the parents, divorce or separate, um, and maybe especially the youth. Maybe they put on like a um, just a fake, you know, f feeling of what they have just to you know show the parents it's okay. But in real life, like inside, they're probably depressed. Many times they probably feel like, oh, is this because my fault? Like, do they do they love me? Is that why they, they don't love me anymore? Am I the problem? Um, and we also see, like, in societies, like, in schools, there's much violence. And I think maybe a lot of the issues and problems amongst youth and amongst um, children is that they're, the, the, the separation from the parents and divorce cause, like, all these, can cause all these different problems. And the children are insecure. They don't have an example, a role model they can look up to and they don't have that guidance that can help them as they grow and become you know, young women and men. Mm -hmm. Okay, another section we had in that uh, presentation was that when somebody married, it unite different custom. In our example, we were from Switzerland and from Argentina and we brought together different custom that I had, that you had, Lisbeth, but what about those families that maybe do not come from different countries? Do also need to have this uh, experience of adapting and, and, and having difference that they need to uh, join together in the experience? What can you say about that? Um, yes, of course. The, each couple, that each person that is getting married, you bring a whole world with you and different 
different you were different raised each one brings the customs from their homes and and it needs to be united each marriage is to unite goals the ways of thinking that they receive from information and habits that must be united between husband and wife and it is i think it's a very beautiful time when when two worlds come together and you are the one who can create your life your marriage life you can um, and including god in this when you, when this union is established um, to bring to make make your own family no the way you like to have new customs and say yeah this one we we will not do we have we we are having our priority in in that way of life so and it goes usually by values no what what are the values of that new couple mm -hmm. so each union is is coming from both sides it doesn't matter where you are raised or how far away you have been living before mm -hmm. okay and talita you also see that uh, because mama brought some food in the home and i brought some hat or some food that i i used to have it in in Argentina, what are those things that you like most from Switzerland and from Argentina? Well, I from Argentina, I love something called tarta. It's really good, and also empanadas. They're very good. And from Switzerland, I love something called rishi. It's like shredded potato in the oven. And also, I love cakes that my mom makes from Europe, and also cookies. Here yeah, we see nice thing, Catalita. Mm -hmm. We see that. We cannot just have Argentinian food in the home or Switzerland food. Why? Because we want to make each other happy. Then we need to create our own home, our own circle. Another uh, part that we saw was this sacred, as we mentioned, this sacred circle. Sacred. And mm -hmm. it's very important. When we, um, especially when couples are uh, in friendship, they need to understand that the decision is for the whole life. They need to understand that in this relationship, they need to satisfy all, as you mentioned, the goal, the, the, the um, what I want to achieve in my life. It needs to be in this uh, circle. And it's a holy circle. That means I need to respect this relationship. I cannot say, okay, you know, my wife is a little bit too, uh, um, serious and I need a little bit more more relaxing time that's why I need to spend a lot of time with my friends be careful when somebody thinking that way what will happen will get maybe attracted to another friend and then with this what happened in society start playing why because he's looking to solve his need outside his home that's why it's very nice I'll say the word of God in Song of Solomon chapter 4 verse number 12 a garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse. A spring shut up, a fountain sealed. That means it's just for me with my wife. My best friend should be my wife. My best counselor should be my wife. My moment of relaxation should be my wife. My home should be the place that I get strength, that I build up. And if there is not the reality, build it in that way. It should be like that. Because if we start looking outside, we are breaking this principle from the, from the Word of God. That's why a young brothers and sisters, and even here is my daughter, mm. Melite, when we look for friends, I know you are young, you know, time comes, you start looking for a friend, you feel the need of maybe somebody to spend life with, you need to think in somebody that, again, will satisfy your need. Will you help him in his need? Not just, oh, he's elegant, he has a good salary, and <laughs> these are things you need to think to, but it's also that we may feel that we can support each other and that his talent make me happy because this will be the real life. What else can you say for uh, Melita Elizabeth? Yeah, it is important when you look for a young man that you choose one that really you can spend your whole life together so the first i would say is important that he loves god and that he puts god in first and and also that he 
he loves to have a wife and have a family and is responsible in this. It is, you can see that in how he, he treats his mother or his siblings. Look at his character, how, how he would work, how he would deal with others. Mm -hmm. Then you know with whom you will get married. It's also important to know if he can support the family, if he can also earn the money to, to um, take care of the life expenses, and also that he has love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, another point we saw in that presentation was the moral deviation that is affecting the marriages. Melite, what can you say? What are the things you think in the society that is affecting the mind of young people and affecting even the marriages? Well, I think one would probably be fashion. It's, it's a big thing and it's quite right. Like these days it's very immodest and immoral. But we also have things such as in the movie industry, in many movies, fictional movies, they have um, storylines where, you know, the marriage is separated or divorced, and we know that's not how God wants it to be. And so the way they're presenting it is as if it's showing it's, it's okay, but that's um, it's not right. And then also, as we, as we know, pornography is also, it destroys the mind, and it's, it's not good. And also... Yeah, in general, also respect for the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned pornography. Uh, and Pastor Sanchez mentioned different moral deviation, how this affect the, the mind and the future. And really, this affect not just, okay, I'm married, I have my partner. No, habits when they are created, especially the, these kind of vices, immoral vices, it affects even in the marriage life. That's why it's very, we need to be very careful. And, but with the help of God, we can overcome this. But we need to consider that, okay, first, we need to be careful that we not have a time, a leisure time, that we are not doing anything, because we need to, this time, it provoked on the mind to see what can I do? And if I already had this kind of biases, I need to replace this time with the proper activity, thinking in service, thinking in uh, studies, in order in order to be uh, occupying my mind with healthy things. And uh, above everything, as the, the spiritual life, the life with God. God will help us if we are come closest to the Lord. And uh, God is the only one that can help us to overcome these vices. And remember, these vices affect even in the a married life. We need to be very careful, ask God to help us and keep distance. What else can you say about right. this, Lisbeth? Yes, Brother Sanchez also mentioned how important it is for parents to instruct their children also in, in having a good moral. So, and how to protect them, how to prepare them when temptation comes, because a temptation comes through thoughts, through other colleagues, through, through friends, and also what, what we see in the streets. So I, I think it's very important that we speak to our children in their different ages. First of all, that they understand God, that God has created man and woman as, as they are, and that they also can understand that it's not a free will that we can decide what we feel, how, if I want to be a woman or a man. This is so, so strongly taught in, in our society today. Then also it is important when they grow into the adolescent year that we give them a panoramic picture of what is going on in their minds, with their feelings, emotions, and, then, and that they have to be very careful in this age that they stay on God's side and ask, help, ask His help because it, it's like an abyss that is beside them and if they fall into it, it's hard to get out of this all drugs and, and vices and things like that. So it's important to talk about peer pressure because friends, the group, the classes, they, they, they have a big influence so we need to, they need to understand that conformity is very important that you don't adapt to bad things. Be able to say no and be a good example and you will carry others to push others for a good example. Also 
to that they choose right friends and and they always listen to their parents in the, in that age it's very important because they are experienced and have counsel can counsel them well and friends can be a bad influence or also a good influence so also important to talk about identity that they know okay um, so they know something that gives them identity for example their face going to church or or that something that builds their life their hobbies uh, a work that can they can develop activities uh, and then also another point is so important to talk the physical changes the anatomy of an, that is they are going to change and what happens in a boy what happens in a girl and also that they many young people that are at attacked by their thoughts they have happy feelings and and good thoughts and then suddenly um, depressive thoughts and bad thoughts so th they need to know that this will come up in in that age and that it's okay that is normal that this comes and then the parents can help to balance this out again so and then also it's important that they know that marriage is the intimacy in the marriage is just for married couples and elsewise it, it is if if um, they think in s such things or uh, try to do such things they need to know that it is called fornication and it's a sin also yeah uh, also that it is important that um, when they think in boyfriend or girlfriend that God has its time and it should not just start in an immature age so they that it's time to wait and time to develop their their talents and and be ready with God when the time comes for them to choose a life partner so there are dangers also like my like vices like smoking drugs alcohol pornography masturbation all these things is important that we give them a, a panorama of what this is and and they should keep away from all these dangers but also above all let, let's give them plenty of instruction how, how blessed it is when they live the life how God wants it to be and and according to his will and like his instruction that they will have plenty of blessings and choice and they can avoid a lot of tears and struggles and and problems in their lives mm -hmm. so I think this is important that they they thank you. Teach thank them. you for the, we hear a lot of different counsels that we need to consider in this part. And above everything, let's hear the advice of God's words from Colossians 3, 5 and 6. Therefore, put to death the early things in your members, fornication, impurity, low passion, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of those things, the wrath of God comes upon the rebellious. That says very clear that if we give place for those immoral things, not only we are going to be affected, but even our families and our future, and even our eternal life. May the Lord help us that we work in the communication between couples, between children, and also considering this importance of this relationship, these family binds, that is this sacred circle. May the Lord help us in our homes. Let's pray together to close. Or the Heavenly Father, we come to thee and we thank you, Lord, for your families. Help us, Lord, that we may continue building up communication in our relationship between spouses. Help the, the couples that are here in this program, Lord. Help in the relation also with the children, that we may take time in growing in our communication, in how, seeing how we can be a blessing for each other. But help us, Lord, also to understand the sacredness of this important circle, the home circle, this holy circle that you have created. Lord, build, be the center of our families and help us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask all this. Amen. Amen.
Редактор субтитров А.Семкин Корректор А.Егорова 
Hello dear brethren, I would like to share with you how my parents' example and the way they brought me up have had an influence on my own experience as I started my own family. I'm Anise. I live in Mosbach, Germany. I'm married to Miguel Cabrera. Together we have four children and for seven years we have had the privilege of being parents. First of all, I want to thank God for the parents he gave me. They have been a great example for me and also for the great treasure they have given me through education and that I can continue passing on to my children. Both my husband and I grew up in Christian homes. Well, I also would like to thank my in-laws, of course, for the way they brought up my husband and together we have decided the path in which we want to guide our children. Well, our parents guided us on the path of love. They taught us music, health, to take care of our health with natural medicine and to put it into practice. As a child, I remember that when I was ill, I was always given natural medicine such as mud, dolor, high fever, cold towels on my forehead or teas to drink. Well, all those things of natural medicine that today I can also practice with my children. Going to church, for example, as a child, attending church was really important. We would take the bus when we didn't have a car. We would go to church twice a week, on Wednesdays and Saturdays. We would go together, whether it was raining or cold, because attending church was something important. Spending time with God, daily services, of course, daily prayers, even though we were little kids, We took time to come closer to God. Well, little details that one learns as a child and that are very important, like respect for others, love for nature, and so many things I could mention. Everything I saw as a child, I learned. By watching, we learn, of course, and I have also implemented this way of teaching in my home. We have decided to do a few things different from the way our parents did it. Because of course, at the end of the day, we are all humans and we all make mistakes. In my case, for example, at home, learning languages was not a priority. As a child, I only learned Spanish. And today, we teach our children both Spanish and German. Of course, it is another family situation. In my case, I lead as a child in Argentina. We did not need another language. Dad was always traveling far away and it was more difficult. But nowadays, the knowledge that we have is different. We make different decisions than our parents and that is also correct, right? For example, nowadays, we also have other challenges regarding technology, for example, challenges that our parents didn't have because it was another generation. Today, we have to educate our children so that they know how to deal with technology. It is something very important because an electronic device with internet access can be a very bad influence and well, it is important to teach them to use it well. As I said, the education I received, I see it as a great treasure and I see the great responsibility I have as a mother to use what I learned to guide my children so that they too have that important foundation for life and that they may one day share it with others. I can now understand my parents so much more, especially my mother. When I was a child or as a teenager, I often complained about the decision my parents made. Why I can't go out? Why can't I have these friends? Why do I have to do what you're asking? Why are there so many limits? Why can I eat what I want? And so on. Well, we want to be free. We want to be independent. And all the decisions our parents made limited us in a way and we didn't like it. However, now I realize that It is a great help to have parents directing us. 
It is very important. Understanding the limits my parents established, the sacrifices that my mother made for us so many times so that we could have a better education. Many silences, many tears, many prayers. And well, also challenges that I have had and I'm grateful for those moments, although they were perhaps not so pleasant in the past. But today, I appreciate everything my parents did because I have been able to choose this path and I'm grateful for being here today. I'm also very happy that my parents are still alive today and that I can go to them when I need some advice. I call them because they live far away and ask them for some advice and they are always there giving me some help and also giving me words of affection and so much wisdom. We should all benefit from our parents or close brothers and sisters from the church who can also help us with wisdom to educate our children. Every day we are learning more and more. We are not perfect and what we have learned we try to implement, but of course we still don't do everything right. There is so much to learn. So we must ask God for wisdom so he can help us to decide what is the right thing to do for our children. There is a song that I know in Spanish that says, Lord, I want to be like you because my children want to be like me. And that is my wish because our children admire us and look up to us. So we should ask God to help us by giving us wisdom to guide them on the right path, to be a good example for them, and may they also see Jesus in us. Greetings and blessings to all. Goodbye. Pasado muchos años y tú y yo continuamos por la senda del amor. A pesar de las tormentas que
ludziom, że kocha ich, że się o nich wciąż troszczę. Jeśli zeszli już z moich dróg, powiedz, że szukam ich. Peace of God be with all of brothers and sisters. Uh, we want to share the third summary of the talk presented in this week, this family conference under the title EFATA. And today I'm here in this third review with my wife Lisbeth, with my uh, daughter Joella, and my daughter Damaris. And we are happy and thankful to the Lord for this opportunity also to share the thoughts. But first of all, we would like to ask God through prayers that he may guide us in this presentation. Damaris, please lead us in prayer. Sure, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time. We are so grateful for this opportunity to be sharing your desire for every family. May you please guide our words, guide our thoughts, also guide all the listeners. And may this um, help to inspire families and may you do changes in those in the lives of families that need your help. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you all this. And amen. Amen. Uh, we have here two more topics during these weeks uh, in relation about the identity of a man and also the identity of a woman and their roles in the marriages. We have a sister Fanny Gonzalez from Colombia that spoke about the woman and Pastor Rosa Calderon from uh, Peru that spoke about the man. And uh, I like to introduce this summary with uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse number 27. The Word of God says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Lisbeth, can you tell us a little bit a summary of the main points mm -hmm. that were included in these topics? Yes. Um, highlighting some of these topics is first... And they were talking about the identity of a man and a woman, how important it is that everyone has its own identity, and then the role of a man in marriage as the head of the home, the provider, the protector, the love he gives to the family, the, the first place he gives his wife as a helper, and then the role of the woman in the marriage, as mm -hmm. she's a helpmeet, that she is using God's wisdom to bring her family f f running forward and also that she's spiritual and uh, is a helper in the formation of the characters of her family members. 
uh, as well also leading the children in their home and good in administrator. Then it was also talking about the problems of machism and feminism uh, in the women. So in these presentations there are several inter interesting topics highlighted. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is a general. And we need to like to make a little bit practice now this point. And I, I want to ask a few questions to my daughters, to my wife. What do you, Joel, understand for this uh, feminist movement? What is really, uh, is that positive? Is that good? What are they, what is this? What do you understand for that? Um, well, a feminist woman is a woman that believes that she can do everything by herself and is independent and doesn't like for other helpers, or for example, her husband or other her friends to support her. Well, obviously she needs support, but she likes to do everything by herself. And she supports um, abortion and other other different things that um, that are strong feminist movements. And um, the she has the right to she believes she has the right to decide with her body. But this all after being irresponsible with life. The feminist woman also does not respect commitments before God and is in favor of divorce. Mm -hmm. The woman should feel like a woman, a feminine, delicate, and but she must respect God's instructions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, interesting. We, you say we, women need to be feminine, but this is not just feminine, delicate, but this is a movement, it's a kind of philosophy, as you mentioned, that the woman wants to say that he's independent, that she is not united and responsible and committed to the husband, but she say, I can do the sin by myself even decide things that are wrong against the will of God, yeah? And then we have the other movement is the, the macho movement. <laughs> like in several <laughs> cultures, they say, man should be strong. Sometimes what do you think about that? Well, that's another extreme. <laughs> so um, I think in that specifically, many times you lose respect. There's no respect. And it can come to the extreme of abuse or mistreatment. You don't allow the other person to express themselves, to have... Um, to de develop the, themselves, to be developed, and yeah, so you're basically silencing them, and it's all about you, and how they're serving you, and all of this. So it's very self-focused and very focused <clears throat> on, um, yeah, that you're the leader, but you're silencing the other person as well. Mm -hmm. And so it's much more beautiful when there's a balance of those things, when both sides are able to work together and serve each other and love each other and be humble with each other and communicate openly. Um, even though they may be different, they should definitely be working together. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Uh, now, going a little bit to the characteristic of a woman in his roles, Joela, uh, what uh, are the things that mommy taught you that you should think that are important as a woman? in the life and a future mother that you will be maybe one day a future also wife what are the things that you consider important well my mom has taught us a lot of important things that we should practice in our lives and uh, several points that i think are um special to me which is uh first of all we like to have a nice home everything clean everything organized we like to each have a special job that everything can stay organized. We can switch jobs throughout the month. And also the service and food. I love cooking and my mom has taught all of us to cook, even my dad and my brothers. We also know how to cook several meals, but she made sure that all of us um, girls learn how to um, cook. And she's also, um, she's also cared for us in our education. She has this homeschool, Talita and I are homeschooled, and she thinks it's really important, and we think it's really important because she can spend more time with us, and also we can learn more about the Bible, and we can read the Bible more every day, and also she respects us steadfast in our values, and I value this as an aid in my development. Also, my mom encourages us to read the Bible, like I mentioned before, every day we should read the Bible, and my mom has given us so much care and joy, especially when my dad is on his trips. Um, she's been there to support us. So. Yeah, Julie is a very good cook. Uh, our daughters, had, all of them had a different time. 
And now Joel is a special cook and she likes to have the house very nice, neaty, orderly, everything. And that is wonderful. Lisa, what else do you, will you say are the inspired thoughts that we get that should have a, as a goal, as ideally woman, especially mm -hmm. from the Word of God? What do you think? Yeah. I think there is no mm -hmm. better chapter than what is written in Proverbs 31. The woman that is, is working with her hands, that that her husband can trust her when he comes home uh, and that he can... Yeah, it is important that when you're at work that you know your wife is doing and what she's supposed to do in her house to advance the household. Uh, the woman of Proverbs 31 says that she uses her hands wisely. She does everything she can with her hands, like weaving, baking, making bread. Uh, rich, good rich meals, maintain also the family healthy uh, and maintain a wonderful home like Chola already said. Um, she works in her garden, brings the food from there and also is, um, she is good in hospitality to help mm -hmm. the needy one and to care for the one who are sick and is also very good administrator there is many things you have to do in your household, in administration, uh, all the papers governments ask or schools ask, and also to keep the finances running well, that the budgets may always be in a good balance, mm -hmm. and even some extras to use when needs are, are there. Then also, of course, she gives advice to, to her family, to her children, some some ideas for her husband but above all she fears god and reads her bible communicates with the lord in everything we do we women we need this relation to the lord also like our husbands need it but we need it in our household with our families it says in proverbs 31 verse 30 favor is deceitful and beauty is vain but the woman that fears the lord shall be praised mm -hmm. Uh, did you hear, my daughter? This is very important. You should keep Proverbs 31 as ideal in your development because this is what the Lord recommends for important elements for a woman. And that's why also Marie Lisa, because she loved uh, this characteristic of having a blessing in her home. And now, Damaris, let us now see a little bit about the role of a man. What kind of a man do you think can be a good husband or a good father? What do you think should be the characteristics that she should have? So there are several like fundamental characteristics that they should have, and that would be that he is a provider. He works for his family. He can uh, financially sustain his home. Mm -hmm. Then that he's respectful with his family, with every person in the home, especially his wife, his children. Helpful when there is a need, not just standing watching, but in being involved with the family. Mm -hmm. Protective. Of course, that's the role God has made man different in. Um, but also caring and loving and just supporting the family in every aspect. But if above all that, and I think it includes all that and other things as well, it's when he fears God that he seeks the best for his family as well and many other areas. But fearing God goes into, covers all things. Mm -hmm. um, God has given to demand great responsibilities. And as you mentioned, above everything, the man is the priest of the home. And what does it mean that he is the priest? That he is the person responsible to gather the family together, to call the family for prayers, to call the family for the reading of the Word of God. This is very important role. He is the person that should unite and inspire, not just say, let's go to church, but bring the church in the home, bring the Bible to be the center of the home. God should be the center of the, of the life of the husband, as well as he should bring God in the center in the life of the family, in his relation with his wife, in the relation with the children. That is very important. The husband is not just the one that uh, is maintaining the family, but he should think that there are other priorities also more than just bringing the financial support that the family need. The, the family need also time, need dialogue, it need understanding, it need uh, the care, it need the help 
And all these should, are, are responsibilities that the husband should not neglect. He should be an example in everything. Uh, and for all these responsibilities, he needs time. It's not just to arrive home and rest. No, we need to help each other in our responsibilities. One thing in the Bible is very interesting. It says in 2 Kings chapter 23, verse number 32, And he did not that, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his fathers had done. Here we see he followed the recommendation of his father, did wrong. Then be careful. This is mentioned from many of the kings that they just did the, the evil things as their father did. But this is another example in 2 Chronicles 17 that says, And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David and sought not unto Balin. Here we see the father being respectful to God and giving the best example and being also firm. And the children learning, children learn not just from what we tell them, but how we live our experience. And this is very important. How then we inspire, how we, the best example that we give to our family. Now we go to the last part of the conference, and that was a presentation that was given by Pastor Adalicio Fontes, and he spoke about uh, the word Ephata. Uh, and uh, what do we story do we remember in Ephata? Joella, can you tell me a little bit what story do we remember about Ephata? Yeah, there's a story in the Bible where um, some people bring a man to Jesus and they say that he's deaf and he has stutter problems where he talks and it's startful. And, well, they, Jesus, they bring him to Jesus and Jesus takes him away from the crowd because there's always people around Jesus. So he takes him away and he sticks a finger in his ear and he also spits on his finger and he touches with his finger, the tongue of the man, and then, well, a miracle happens, and he can speak again perfectly, and he has good hearing again. Mm -hmm. Thank you uh, for remember, reminding us this story. Now, Damaris, what do you think are the uh, lessons that we can take from that story? Um, there's several things. So, first of all, he freed this man from his physical ailments, and he wants to free us from our limitations, whatever they may be. And also, Jesus took him aside. It was a personal issue. God wanted to heal him, but he, Jesus wanted to be a very personal experience. So Jesus also wants the same thing with us. He wants us to have a personal experience with him that we know this is between us and God. Um, Jesus also opened his ears, and he opened, or he was able to let loose his, let his tongue free, or that he was able to speak well. And with God's help, we can also be able to, we can also do these things in our home, be able to listen better, to be able to communicate better, to watch our tongue, watch what we say when we say it, um, mm -hmm. to have open dialogue in the home. And, and just the fact that he was able to heal this man shows that with God, nothing is impossible. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. We see very important things that God also wants to do with us. But now if we apply this to the relationship in the family between husband and wife and within the children. What else can we learn, Lisbeth, from this experience? Yeah, from mm. Ephata, the expression Ephata, we, we want to focus it also in our home. So God wants us to break these barriers that destroy the families. Can be proud, can be anger, can be, can be vices, can be just that we close our ears to our, our children or, or to our husbands or wife. So also everything that is takes away it takes us away from our communication toward each other. But God can help. He can break these barriers. God can help us as couples to learn to hear to each other, understanding the needs of our spouses, to improve also when we listen to our children, the, the, the young children that are growing up, that we have, hear their needs, and also to speak appropriately to them. So every day there is something to counsel and to receive counseling from each other and encourage each other. Also we need to be firm in our principles with the children and always sharing the words of love and encouragement to, to every member in the household. I think this is breaking the barriers, this is 
feeling open to speak and to, to do what comes from God, to spread the love of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And I want to emphasize one more element. Uh, Ephata means be open. We not just need to be open to hear, but our heart needs to be open. When there's differences, many times their hearts get close. And they start this barrier, as you mentioned, Lisbeth, in the relationship. Uh, we then, uh, what are the barriers? Uh, you know, we then avoid certain things. Uh, we don't uh, appreciate certain things anymore. We are scared of, of certain reactions. Why? Because we already had bad experiences in the relationship. But we should not close ourselves. We need to ask God to help us and to open and to do the work of reconciliation just to be open the heart to be broken to be one for another one to understand each other the difference should not separate us the difference should help us to understand that there is a need and we can do this by the work of God God is uh, the God of reconciliation and he wants us also to open our minds, to open our hearts through His Spirit, that we can be transformed. We, he wants heal families. He wants strong, united families. We are like that man, that we sometimes do not understand. We are like a problem in our ears. Uh, maybe we had also a problem in the communication. We stutter, we have difficulties to talk. But God can help us. 2 Corinthians 5.18 says, And all these things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Interesting how they say here, He hath not... Uh, imputed the transgress, transpasses unto them. He did not condemn them. Many times we are waiting the others to come to reconcile. So because you did wrong. But this is not the example of Jesus. He took the step of showing love. Dear families, dear father, mother, children, let's do all the step. Let's try to uh, take the example of Jesus and work this wonderful work of reconciliation in our families. Of dialogue, of unity, of being open one to another one. Every one of us has needs and we are there to be a blessing and in every family as well as in my family we need to be a blessing to each other and make the other happy. Let's put this goal and if we put God in the center of our family he will bless our families. I, my desire is that through this conference we have learned many things that we can implement in our homes and be a blessing in, in be a blessing in, for our homes, for our families. Let's pray together. And let's ask God that he may bless us now at the end of this program. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come to thee, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for your love to us. We thank you for the opportunity to remember this topic that we hear this week on and make an analysis of them and see how we can implement these things in our life. Lord, help us to fulfill properly your role as husband, uh, to respect our wives, to love them, to put them in the first place, to serve, to support, to care, to protect. Help our soul, wives, to understand the role in, in supporting, being a helpmate. Help us, Lord, to respect each other, to care for each other. Help, Lord, to inspire our children in their service. Help, Lord, that may not go to the extremes, Lord, and help us that we may uh, inspire our children in this wonderful relation that you have created man and wife, Lord. This world is so confused with wrong relationship that is a sin, it's a transgression. But we want you to inspire us and reconcile our, our hearts, Lord, our marriages. Heal the marriages that are having problems, Lord. You are the Almighty God and as you heal that man, you open his ear and his mouth, Lord, heal also our families. We surrender our life before you and we praise your name, Lord. We thank you for this conference. In Jesus' name we pray all this. Amen. Amen. God bless you.
Todo es bello en el hogar Cuando hay amor Nada te podrá dañar Cuando hay amor Paz y gozo se hallarán Fuerzas se restaurarán Y el Señor será cuando hay amor, con amor, con amor, todo es bello en cuando hay amor. Hasta en chozas hay placer, cuando hay amor, odio oh, mal no puede haber, cuando hay amor. Cada rosa en el jardín, los claveles y el jazmín, a mis males ponen fin, cuando hay amor. Con amor, con amor, con amor, cuando hay amor. Tiene el labio su canción cuando hay amor. Cuando hay amor, el riacho al murmurar y las aves al cantar nos inspiran sin cesar. Cuando hay amor, Te ruego hoy, más de ese amor, ya que tuyo siempre soy, dame ese amor. Los que tienes en tu rey, siempre andan en tu rey, y te honran como rey. Por tu gran amor, con amor, con amor, todo es bello en derredor, cuando Brothers in faith, friends and collaborators, we have reached the end of our family congress for Europe and other countries. We have a word of reflection based on Psalm 106, 1. Praise ye the Lord, or give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endured forever. This attitude of the psalmist, without a doubt, served us as a stimulus during this Congress, even in the midst of the difficulties faced. Praise be the King of Kings for having directed everything so that we could carry out this event. Being the first of our organization simultaneously translated into 10 languages. We had challenges that brought us 
a lot of anxiety and fear. But from the beginning, we left it in the hands of God, and we have achieved this victory. Gratitude, unity, hope, and sense of accomplishment are the closing words of our family congress. If we hadn't had unity within our group, prayer and consecration to the Lord, we would not have advanced with the help of God and we would not have got to where we are at the moment, the closing of this Congress. The positive result was only possible because we have a God who, contrary to human expectations, showed us that everything is possible. There can never be an external victory without an internal victory. In a military victory before the battle, there must be organization, a cause to fight for, courage, and discipline. David defeated the giant Goliath by shooting a stone with his sling and driving it into the forehead of the Philistine. David fought in the name of the Lord. It is to the God of Israel that we redeem all the glory, and in his name this meeting was held. This Congress provided many moments of reflection with the different messages that were expressed here with love, effort, and prayer. What should we do with them? Do not let it die in oblivion. We need a practical Christianity in the family, and thus we will have a revived church. God chose this moment to teach us as a family. The Lord has used messengers to warn us of the dangers that surround our families, especially during these last days. The work is not finished. We still have a long way to go. This is not the time to put away the sword. On behalf of the family department and its committee, I would like to thank you all. We thank everyone involved in this program to the different countries and their leaders that made this programming possible. The support of the transmission of the European Division, the General Association, and the Bible is right. Many thanks to the presenters, preachers, translators, designers, editors, coordinators, and to all those who did the dubbing, and to the competent team that work with me, and they are sisters Tania from England, Fanny from Colombia, Melva from Spain, Elizabeth from Germany, and Loli from Spain. We conclude this Congress with hearts full of gratitude to God who allowed this event to reach our hearts and our homes. As Jesus said, raising his eyes to heaven. Ephata. May we always have this willingness to open our hearts to the work of the Holy Spirit and recognize our total dependence on him. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity that we have to unite so many brethren in different parts of the world. We want to thank you for the opportunity that we had to do this Congress, which is now coming to an end. 
We want that the words that were said during these past few days may be a blessing and be written in our hearts. I ask you, Father, to please bless each collaborator, each volunteer who has collaborated in this event. Bless the preachers, bless the message, bless each of your children, bless Heavenly Father, the team that works with me in this department. Please bless our families, a special blessing for each family that has accompanied us during these days of Congress. May your grace be with us. May the Holy Spirit do this special work in our hearts and that our lives may be transformed in the image of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we beg you to bless our churches, our families, your people around the world. In the name of Jesus, amen. Jehová te bendiga y te guarde. Jehová haga resplandecer su rostro sobre ti y tenga de ti misericordia. Jehová alce sobre ti su rostro y ponga en ti paz. Amén. Amén.